This is the Ethan Behrman Program on KGO 810. You don't gotta go the Behrman, 20 minutes after 1 p.m. Studio number 415 415-808-0810. Follow me on Twitter. Send me your tweets as well. At Ethan Behrman. I have a job. Woo! I'm ex- oh, isn't that good news, right? I mean, it's, it's good to have a job. And uh, this latest jobs report showed that 255,000 more people got jobs last month. So uh, what does that mean, though, with that GDP number being so low at 1.2%? I got um, an expert here. He's the author of Workplace Poker. His name is Dan Rust. You've heard him here before. He's got uh, a lot of time in the corporate training world as well. Dan, welcome back to the show. Hey, Ethan. Great, great to be with you. Hey, well, so, all right, two hundred fifty. What I mean, these numbers don't mean anything other than you know, one political party will say my my man is responsible for creating two hundred fifty five thousand jobs, which of course we know the president isn't. Um, and, or if it was a bad jobs report, then the Republicans would be blaming, saying, see, that's what happens with a Democrat in office. But really, I mean, in terms of uh, our day-to-day jobs and employment and, and, you know, again, your book is Workplace Poker, you know, how we can function in the work- workplace. What does this mean to me? Well, and, you know, I have a politically agnostic perspective on, on just about everything. My My pure focus is... What does this mean for someone's career? How is this going to help or hurt someone? And and how can we all do a better job of managing our careers and and playing the game to to accelerate our careers and, and achieve something beyond sort of just the average level of, of career growth? And so when I look at these these jobs numbers, the thing that fascinates me first, and and I'm not a, a financial analyst, but I am kind of a geek when it comes to numbers and this type of thing. I'm fascinated by the PR campaign that comes out with the jobs report because at the same time that the jobs report is produced, what's also produced is a press release, quotes, pull quotes. So a journalist doesn't actually have to do any work and doesn't have to read anything. A journalist can write a a pretty hefty article about the jobs report simply pulling from the press release. And that's why if you actually do a scan or an online search of the, of the July jobs report, it's amazing how all of the journalists have come to essentially the same conclusion, uh, you know, which is uh, better uh, jobs growth better than expected and um, things are, seem to be getting stronger. And, uh, and because things are getting stronger, the Fed might be more likely to uh, tick interest rates up a bit uh, in the not-so-distant future. But in reality, when you, when you pull the, the layers away, when you peel the layers away a few, what you find is that the bulk of the new jobs that were added remain in the lower-paying sectors and industries. And, and essentially, uh, the hourly workers and the salaried workers who are making under 40000 a year, that's where you see strong job growth. In the 40K to 80K range, it's about flat. It's, it's, it's flat enough where it, it, it doesn't really seem to be there that there's a significant trend upward or downward. But then above 80K a year, which is what's relevant to most of your listeners in Silicon oh, yes. Valley, um, those jobs continue a slow decline. And you, ha- you have to work really hard to get to that, and you have to connect some dots that aren't connected for you. But it's true, and I would bet that that syncs up with the um, real world that your listeners are experiencing. They know that there's not this sense of, 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 of growth, organic growth right now, that, that you have to be looking out for. If you've got, if you've got a well-paying job, you've got to be looking out for yourself, and the most important economic report for you has to do with your company and its competitors, your geographic region, and your industry. And there's, there's really nobody that's, that's out there synthesizing that for for you and your career uh, so you got to look around at your own company what are, what are the sales forecasts what's happening who are the new competitors in the marketplace you know and a, a, a lot in the silicon valley you know we had the <laughs> uber just had some big news this last week jet.com but w- with a big buyout uh, tesla had some interesting numbers but but let's get to the core of this i mean work, workplace poker in your book you talk about some really key things so i want to hone in on one key one so let's say I'm, you know, I'm making, let's say, $100,000 a year, which is somewhat normal in the Bay Area, especially Silicon Valley. Um, 
So I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a year. There's a lot of competition, and what do what do you think is like the one thing I need to be looking for that most people are forgetting to do in their job on a, on a regular basis? What what am I missing when I go to work? I think to myself, I'm working hard. I wrote a thousand lines of code, or I you know I managed these people today, whatever that is. But what am I missing to keep that job and to get ahead? I'll, I'll give you this is a, a, a simple one, but it's an important question that you ask yourself virtually every quarter or all the time, how how closely is what I do tied to helping my company make more money or save more money in this quarter and the next quarter? And if, if if you struggle to connect the dots to say, well, yeah, I may not be helping us exactly save money, but I, you know, my work is focused on enhancing the culture and doing this and that. And if, if you, if you can't tie what you're doing directly to saving more money or making more money short term, uh, then a red flag should go up for you. If the project you're working on, even if it's a, supposed to be a, a growth money maker, if you, if you're looking at your project now and you say, uh, wow, we were, we were supposed to be um, hitting profitability next quarter, but now you know, we all realize that um, that's going to be extended at least two more quarters. That's a red flag because companies are no longer feeling great about their investments in growth a year and a half from now. It's what's going to grow me next quarter or the following quarter. And, and if you just are aware that there, there are some projects within your company that are um, golden boys and others not so much, a- anything you can do to make sure that what you are working on is attached to a high riser within your company and, and detach yourself um, early. Not, you know, by the time everyone else is thinking this way, it's too late. Now, if, you, if you work for Yahoo and you realize, oh, my God, you know, we, we, there probably is going to be a – you know, a, a significant rationalization of everyone's roles, and um, and depending upon you know what happens to the company, um, my role might be at risk. So I may may want to see if I can get off of this project onto another project. At the point in time everyone's thinking that way, it's too late. You need to be thinking that way two or three chess moves a- ahead of the game. And and I'm you know I I have to apologize to some people because they get frustrated thinking that they have to think about this. Because that's that's not what anyone told them. What what they were told uh-huh. is, oh man, we want to hire you. We love you for what you do. You're so talented. Uh, we want you to work on this. And of course, this this thing that we want you to work on is the most important thing. And we're committed to it. I, I, I've heard those stories. We've all heard those stories. But everything changes quarter by quarter based upon what's really happening in your business and in your market. And that's how you get ahead, though, is by thinking that way. How do I either make more money or save more money for the company? I lo- that's a perfect advice. Dan Rust, the book is Workplace Poker. Dan, thanks for coming on the show today. Appreciate it, Ethan. Yeah, thanks so much, Dan. Really appreciate that. Look, it's time now to give away some tickets. KGO 810 is getting you into the Concord Pavilion to rock out with Slipknot and Marilyn Manson on August the 13th and Disturbed on August 19th. Tickets are on sale now at LiveNation.com. But caller number 10 right now on the KGO contest line, 415-995-6810, 415-995-6810. We'll win two tickets to both shows, and that's not all. Not only will you win the tickets into both shows, but one lucky winner will win a pit pass upgrade for both shows and... You'll qualify into this week's Fly Away Friday, drawing for a trip for two to the Grand Palladium Hotel and Spa in Riviera Nayarit, Mexico. Tickets furnished by Live Nation, uh, pack, uh, travel package furnished by Apple Vacations and Grand Palladium Hotels and Resorts. Again, 415-995-6810, 415-995-6810. Well, and speaking of Silicon Valley, oh my goodness, Facebook is going to take on clickbait. What in the world does that mean? That's next. I'm Ethan Behrman, KGO 810.